thing, uh, Noreen McCarthy couldn't be here today. And uh, I spoke to her this morning and expressed the sadness because I've spoken to Noreen so many times over the last probably five or six months. But I just wanted to let her know that at least we were still thinking of her. On behalf of my staff and myself, I want to thank everyone for helping us celebrate this historic milestone. Today, Grand Falls Drugstore finds itself sharing the spotlight with, would you believe, Fenway Park, Harvard, and IBM, companies who have recently been named to the Centennial Honor Roll. For us as a small business, it makes us very proud to know we have earned the same prestigious recognition as one of baseball's most glorious ballparks. For those of you who have seen our brochure, I'm sure you will agree that the slogan, growing up with the town, is very appropriate. But it would never, never have been made possible without you, our customers. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. But there is another reason today that makes today so very special. And it's the fact that we have with us family members who are directly and indirectly connected to the McCarthys, the Winslows, and the Greens. These are the three families who represent the transition of Grand Falls Drug Store from 1913 until today's present date. I mentioned Noreen. We got Sheila and Dolores here from the McCarthy family. We've got Hallie and Helene from the Winslow family. And myself and my wife, Suzette. My children, Brandon, Adam, Sarah. Calista couldn't make it. And siblings, Emily, Eileen, and Don from the Green family. Your presence in reality today is the icing on the cake. And we also have customers who remember Thomas P. McCarthy mixing medicine in 1947. And some of my favorite customers, James Day, Ben Butt, Claris Way, Helen Conway, Allison Bartle, and Ruth Power. An awesome testimony to a unique story of a small family drugstore that has fought the good fight for 100 years and counting. Over the past year, many have asked me the question, what's the secret to 100 years of success? After thinking it over for some time, I have come to the conclusion there are three main reasons why we have stayed open for 100 years. First and foremost is customer service. Secondly is customer service. And thirdly is customer service. This past weekend I attended a seminar where a well-known high-profile consultant gave an impressive survival talk to independent pharmacy. In his conclusion, he emphasized the importance of adapting to change and building relationships. I showed him our anniversary brochure, and I pointed to the Kennedy slogan, change is the law of life, and those who look only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. He was so impressed that we were holding a 100th anniversary what I was so impressed with was the fact that the things he was advocating at our meeting, like building relationships and customer service, are the same things we have been doing every single day for the past 100 years. In many ways, it's plain good old common sense. The changes that pharmacy and small business have seen over the past years are in many ways mind-boggling, and the challenges can be overwhelming. And just to prove the point, I'd like to share with you a, which I consider to be a funny story. Back in the 1980s, when interest rates were high and uh, bankruptcies went through the roof, Rich Little did an impersonating job on Prime Minister Trudeau and President Ronald Reagan at the time. It went something like this. Mr. Reagan says to Trudeau, he says, Mr. Trudeau, how would you go about starting a small business in Canada? And Mr. Trudeau said, well, it's very easy, Mr. Reagan. First you start a big business, and then you wait. <laughs> As I ponder how pharmacy has changed over the years, 
there is one thing that I will never, ever want to see change, and that is the customer's choice, his choice or her choice to make his or her own decision. It is a fundamental right to be able to choose your pharmacy. It is a fundamental right to be able to choose your pharmacist. And as a small independent pharmacist who has seen his business make it through 100 years, I say do not let that right be taken away from you. At this point in time, I want to take you back to the early 1900s. I have some special guests here today, and the first special guest I'm going to introduce you to you now. He was really responsible for the origin of Grand Falls Drugstore. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you believe it or not, I present to you Thomas P. McCarthy. Hey. As, I, as I've been looking around, I've been trying to figure out what's happened to High Street. I'm trying to find the uh, co-op store, the royal stores, and the old cabin house that used to be at the end of the street here. And where's the uh, candy store that used to be next door? And the old tailor shop was uh, also up the street here. They're all gone. Unbelievable. As well as the old boardwalk that used to be here many years ago. But it's uh, great to see one building still standing in the same location, the original location for Grand Falls Drug Store. It makes me, it makes me feel kind of, uh, kind of proud knowing that I was involved with it from the very beginning. <laughs> but first of all, let me take you back a few years and tell you how it all started. I remember so clearly back in 1917 when I came in from Carabinero, I got off the train on uh, Grand Falls Station and I was walking into the high street here and as I come down the road there, I seen the smoke coming out of the, uh, the old smoke sector at the A&D company. And I thought to myself, wow, what a, what a symbol of power and progress this is. <clears throat> looks, but it, looks, it looked like the Yarnford brothers had built themselves a beautiful town and a large paper mill. And at the same time, there were some businessmen in England that decided to put up a drugstore here in town, and they were looking for a, well, a chemist at that time, it was called, wasn't a pharmacist. They were looking for a chemist, and, and I was their man, Thomas Patrick McCarthy from Carboneer. I started to work rather quickly, the very next day, as a matter of fact, and my title was chemist. And back in those days, there was nothing prepackaged. Everything you had, you had to make it yourself from powders and concoctions and stuff to break up barnacles, coughs and colds and things like that. And uh, back in, there's, there's a product that we had on the go, it's called Mellow. And there was a young lady at the time that loved it. She swore by it. And I think that's what gave her the longevity of life that she has now. Blanche Lacey, love that syrup. <laughs> then in 1922, I married a beautiful lady, Anna, and together we had seven children. We, we had an apartment just above the drugstore, so all I had to do to go to work was just slip on my slippers and run downstairs. <laughs> we were a very close family, and of course it wasn't long before we had a, another close family, the residents of Grand Falls. Families like the Gowdies, the Malloys, the Rogers, the Keels, 
They all knew me by my first name. Even Jeff Hand, the guy who owned the first car in Grand Falls, was a buddy of mine. Well, what a car he had. I remember one day when a young boy, Danny Goodyear, got kicked by a horse and gashed his leg out. He came to the drugstore. We, we made up a concoction for him, bandaged up his leg. Two days later, he was back at work again. But as I look back, I realize the times we were tough, but we stuck together and we always made it through. The First World War came and passed, and shortly after that came the Great Depression, which was a, a time of a lot of uncertainty. And you had to do what you, you had to do, according to, so to speak. Then there was a big rage of, back in the 30s, there was a big rage of tuberculosis. And then in 1939, of course, the Second World War started. <laughs> And I remember some of, the, some of the young fellows that were going overseas. I made up medications for them to take with them just in case they got injured. But sadly to say, a lot of them did not return. But uh, nobody, nobody gains by a, by a war. But anyway, that's, that's the talk for another day. Of course, while all this was, uh, these events were unfolding, business, business kept thriving on High Street. It was a spot to be sort of speak. And the drugstore was busier than ever. Thank God my daughter, Patricia, decided to follow in my footsteps. I would never be able to carry on without her. In the, in the 50s, of course, Confederation kicked in, and Joey Smallwood was definitely the buzzword. Around then, my health was starting to dwindle, and well, in 1956, I passed away. My grandfather's drugstore moved on and on and on. <laughs> But believe me, it was nice to come back and share this afternoon with you. But the next time I just want you to come and visit me, just knock on the door and ask for Skipper Tom. Thank you. Well, uh, Mrs. Winslow to come to the podium, please. and sweeping floors. If you saw Dad, then you saw me. That was the way it was, and I dearly loved it. I was nine years old when one day Dad mixed me up this yucky syrup to cure a terrible whooping cough. I was so impressed and thankful to him. I knew then I wanted to mix medicines to cure the sick. Dad was my inspiration, so to speak. But life in the 1930s did not make it easy for study. The depression took its toll, and responsibilities at home were endless. Transportation was still lagging, and a new war was about to begin. But there was one bright spot. Newsprint at the A&D Company was prosperous. In 1936, wages increased to 36 cents an hour. And finally, in 1946, I graduated with a pharmaceutical chemist diploma, a moment in my life I will never forget. Life for me then started to blossom in all directions. The Second World War was now over, and business on High Street picked up new steam. Grand Falls Drug Store was busier than ever, and on some days, work was unable to be finished. 
Dad kept giving me more and more responsibility. Then in 1949, I married George P. Winslow, and we went on to raise a family of four, Margaret, Rose, Sheila, and John. So sad neither of them could be here today. But Mary McCormick said I could borrow her smartphone to send a picture through Facebook. Very cool indeed. Thanks so much, Mary. Then, in 1956, Dad died. I was devastated at first, as we all were. I knew then the responsibility of the business rested on my shoulders. This is why Dad had drilled me so hard after I graduated. He wanted to prepare me for the day when I would take over. He always told me to take care of the customer first. Now, Patricia, treat him with dignity and respect, he would say. Always make them want to come back. They were lessons well taught, and they served me big time in guiding the drugstore into the 60s and beyond. In the mid-60s, we decided to install a soda fountain. It was a major hit and quickly became the talk of the town. High Street was now in its heyday. <coughs> Businesses were springing up everywhere. Sobeys, Hudson Bay, Le Moines, Sears, and Scotiabank, just to name a few. My husband, George, now taken, had taken over the running the store, and I focused on the dispensary, so to speak. In 1977, Mom died. It was very sad, but it gave me some time to reflect on life. I found myself spending more time with the Northcliff Drama Club and tried to put the pieces together and move on. These quiet times did me a world of good by helping me to look ahead towards retirement. The good book says there is a time and a place for everything. In 1985, we decided it was time to retire. 30 years of service was enough. I kept thinking about Dad, what Dad had said to me about our customers. Treat them with dignity and respect. Make them want to come back. This was the main message I wanted to convey to Roy Green as he took over the business in September of that year. The customer needs someone they can rely on in, in dark days and in bright. If Baxter Thomas needs a prescription to be delivered, he knows he can call on Roy to get the job done 24 hours a day. And speaking of Baxter, he was down by the pond blowing his horn just before I came here. The next few years were truly years of enjoyment. George and myself spent time relaxing at our cottage at Sandy Point and then often went to the mainland or down south in the winter months. It gave us time to spend with family in Ontario and stay connected with Sheila, who was overseas in England. On June 11, 2001, George passed away after dealing with a stroke a short time before. Despite all the advances in medicine, it cannot diagnose a broken heart. And this is what I died from one month after George's death. To be able to share in this celebration with you is like being sent from heaven. Need I say more? Thank you very much. Well, that's about 70 years covered. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mrs. Winslow. As I look at the past history of what Mr. McCarthy and his daughter, Patricia, have contributed to Grand Falls Drugstore, I am somewhat humble in comparison. I honestly feel most of the heavy lifting was done when I came on board. After all, I, I did take over an established business that had a loyal customer base. Customers were everywhere. So in many ways, I was given the opportunity that I took advantage of, and I really never looked back. Home for me growing up was Winterton, a small fishing community in Trinity Bay. It wasn't always called Winterton. Its original name, I don't always tell people this, was Silly Cove. <laughs> 
I would never let people know where I was from until the new name was adopted. <laughs> Turn left at the Moorlands. Drive 80 kilometers just past Heart's Content. Turn left onto Western Point and up on a small hill was our two-story house. And we had the most beautiful view of Trinity Bay you could ever imagine. I grew up in a fishing boat, and at 13 years old, I was actually filleting fish in the fish plant. I may have loved the salt water, but I hated the fish plant. <laughs> they say when Cabot discovered Newfoundland in 1497, the Queen of Spain gave him 50 pounds. I think she should have given him 50 years. <laughs> Daily chores back then were part of routine living and sawing wood bringing water, planting vegetables, and picking berries were elements of survival. Dad fished all his life. Believe me, we didn't have any money, but we had what we needed. As the old saying goes, the richest person in the world is not the one who has the most, but the one who needs the least. And that's the way it was. Looking back, I still don't know why I wanted to do pharmacy. There was one thing I knew I was not going to do, and that was work in that fish plant. <laughs> My sister Emily convinced me to come in for a summer, summer job in 82, and I managed to get six weeks work here, in this place to my right, Grand Falls Drugstore, under the direction of Patricia Winslow. The story from here is simple. A year later, I returned. And Grand Falls Drugstore is the only place I have ever worked right to this very day. I will never forget the very first day I worked in this store either. I got a cab in from Windsor at the time, as it was called. As I walked in the door that morning, uh, there was an angry, loud voice talking to someone on the telephone. I wasn't sure what to make of it. And I was getting a little bit nervous. Just to tell you, that previous night, the thermostat on the eight-foot ice cream cooler had broken, and the whole ice cream assortment had changed into a runny style rainbow milkshake. The angry voice was that of George P. Winslow. But I soon learned his bark was worse than his bite, and any other uncertainty I had that morning was soon put to rest when I met Mrs. Winslow. One of, a, one of the most mild, considerate, understanding, and helpful people you will ever want to meet. That morning, the ice was broken, or maybe melted, and I developed a relationship with Mr. and Mrs. Winslow that would last forever. Mr. Winslow was a very witty person, and it would not be fitting if I did not tell one story just to illustrate the point. Uh, for people who probably don't know, in our town, the local paper is called The Advertiser. So one evening, Mr. Winslow, I think he was up in his bedroom, and he's told me this story before. Uh, he was probably feeling a little romantic. And he was trying to get Mrs. Winslow to come up the stairs. She was down in the kitchen somewhere. So he sings out, and uh, he says, Patricia, bring up The Advertiser. So Mrs. Winslow just looks around, and in her soft-spoken voice, she sings out. She says, George, the advertiser is up there. He said, well, come up and bring it down. <laughs> My 30 years as pharmacist in Grand Falls Drugstore are riddled with stories, incidents, and relationships, which I will always treasure. A Monday morning was easy to start when you served Sheila Hennessy, Stella Walsh, Jack Etheridge, Harry Nichols, Shirley Davis, Mrs. Corbin, Helen Flood, or even people out of town like Danica, Barbara, or Rory from Badger, or even Marge and Curran and Edna from, yeah, let's see. And I don't mean to overlook some of the Bishop Falls people like Ed Burns and even the Goldlings we still use in Nova Scotia, and we've sent prescriptions even all the way down to Tennessee. My point is in all this, my customers have become family. A very close-knit family at that. There have been some rough spots over the years. 
like the guy who asked me to fill the script one time at 2.30 in the morning, and bounced me a check, <laughs> or the armed robbery we had in 1995, or the two break and enters we had in recent years. But I am a firm believer in people like Anne Frank, who despite the persecution she faced, still believed that human beings were good at heart. And I wish to close with two powerful stories that tend to bring out the very best in human nature. They are two close stories which have pierced my heart as a pharmacist in, in this town. And the first one I'm just going to call the Rebecca Thomas story. And Cliff and, Ed, uh, and Evelyn, grandparents, uh, she died in October 2002. And uh, it was something to do with the brain and she went to St. John's and had come back and, and things were looking good. And I think it was a short while, probably days or weeks after. Evelyn came in with her in the store one morning and I, from what I do remember, she bought her last thing probably at Grandpa's drugstore that I can remember and uh, it was a Barbie Kinder Egg. The other story is the Krista Party story. And I remember she died in September 23rd 1988 and her grandfather Mr. Party used to come to the store and this particular morning he wasn't himself so while I was getting his prescription ready I said Mr. Party you don't seem to be yourself this morning he said uh, no he said uh, I said anything wrong and he said well Krista she was losing her eyesight from the type of leukemia or cancer that she was trying to battle with and uh, he said we're putting new siding on our house and he said this morning she phoned me and she wanted to come down and touch the old siding before she, uh, before she lost her eyesight altogether. All in the past week or so I have spoken to both the parties in the Thomas family and to how much strength these stories have given them in moving on. And I want to move on with them. As the famous poet Robert Frost says, and he is my favorite poet, if you have any doubt just call my daughter Callista in Nova Scotia. But in his theme of the poem, Out Out, he sums it up and he says, in spite of his tragedies, life must go on. There is really no other way. I thank all of you so much for enabling Grandpa's drugstore to go on for 100 years. And we hope another 100 years as well. Thank you so much and God bless. point in time, uh, we've got, I'm glad we got Mr. Hawkins here, Mayor Hawkins, uh, it was hard to get him, he's a busy, busy schedule, but uh, we made it, he made it here today, and I want to call on Mayor Hawkins to uh, say a few words. Uh, 30 degrees today, wow. Uh, considering the cold temperatures, and yet there's so many people that have uh, showed up this afternoon. Certainly, as uh, Roy talked about uh, the history of uh, this street and the history of this facility and this business, as you know, of course, uh, roughly about three or four years ago, we decided to make some significant changes to High Street. And part of the plan, not, not for uh, bikes, but part of the plan was to capture some of the history of this street. And so uh, we invested close to $4 million to make uh, a streetscape such as we have today. It's not completed yet. Uh, we, uh, we do have a new facility that will be going right next to this building. It's our uh, new civic building, which should be, uh, the engineering work is being done now. 
and it should be ready to for construction we're hoping uh, by early fall and that will be a, uh, a big addition to the to the high street when we initiated the program of making a streetscape change down there one, Roy was probably one of the first business owners that decided to participate in the project and as you see it certainly brought back some of the history of what this building was and then of course all the other company or all the other business owners decided that they would invest in their uh, in their uh, uh, storefronts as well and we are so thankful for that a hundred years is a long time and not many business owners can boast of the fact that they've been in business in the same location for a hundred years and so we are proud of the accomplishments of Grand Falls Drugstore. Not only are we proud of their, of their accomplishments over the years, but we are proud of the fact that they still remain in this location. It's very important. A lot of people have a tendency today that they uh, want to move where the action is and they uh, want to be where all the traffic is. And so that sometimes creates some sort of a pressure when it comes to doing business, because we're in business or anyone's in business to make a profit, and that's the bottom line. And sometimes it becomes very difficult to stay in an area that uh, you've been for so long. But I think one of the key things that Roy mentioned when he talked about the success of his business, and there's three successes, and of course, each time he repeated the fact of customer service. And customer service is very important. And people will come where there's customer service. People will support where there's customer service. And so I want to say a big thank you to Roy and the entire staff and to everyone who has made this business a success over the last hundred years. And I hope you are probably here another hundred years. Not too sure that uh, I'll be around for that, but uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll have to uh, reconstruct that over the last uh, next hundred years. But certainly you are to be commended and I'm pleased to see uh, some of my councillors, uh, uh, Councillor Moores, Councillor Buckley Mercer in attendance this afternoon because we do, business is very important to our community and we take a lot of pride in our business community. And it's nice to see members of the chamber as well because this is very important for the future of Grand Falls, Windsor. We've done a lot over the last few years to make sure that uh, we, are, we position ourselves as a business community and that we're open for business. And so we've been fairly successful and uh, we, uh, we appreciate all of the time and all the effort that people have put into that. And so on behalf of the citizens of Grand Falls, Windsor, it's my pleasure, Roy, to present to you a um, plaque on this occasion. If you could come forward, please. Of course, uh, Grand Falls, Windsor, perfectly centered, which is part of our new branding. And everywhere we go, that's uh, no, we, we don't just say where you're from in Grand Falls, Windsor anymore. All the councillors and myself included, whenever we are introduced anywhere in the province, or actually I'm uh, on the Federation Canadian Municipalities, and every time I, I introduce myself and say where I'm from, I use the tagline perfectly centered, because it's very important that we recognize that. But the town of Grand Falls, Windsor congratulates Grand Falls Drugstore on the occasion of your 100th anniversary. We appreciate your contribution to our local economy this past century from 1913 to 2013. And Roy, we indeed wish you all the best in your years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Hawkins. Uh, right now, we're going to. I'm going to ask Mr. Hawkins. He's going to cut a ribbon for us, and uh, we want to sort of make sure the history is preserved in the ribbon cutting. And uh, from the McCarthy family, I've got Miss Sheila Power, and uh, we're going to try to do the ribbon over by the door. So, Sheila, maybe if you can, people over there will open up a little uh, entrance so you can get over by the door. 
Uh, I got Hallie Winslow from the Winslow's family, who uh, I've known since I've been here. And if Hallie would be join you over there. And my youngest daughter, Sarah, she's going to represent the Green family. Thank you, Sheila and Helly, for, for participating. It's great to see everybody represented. Uh, things are moving right along, but we got a couple special treats before it's all over. And at this point, I'm going to tell you of a project that we started about a year ago. And it took a year to do it, I'm not kidding. But once this ceremony was over, I just felt like I wanted something to touch that I could relate to the whole event. And I didn't want a mug and I didn't want something like that. So we came up, my sister works at a quilt shop in CVS. So I came up with this idea that we would probably I, do a quilt. We put a hundred squares on the quilt and each square would represent some aspect in time from 1913 on. I dedicated about 25 to 30 percent of the squares to Grand Falls Drugstore. About another 20 percent I dedicated, well, Abitibi, the A&D company, was such a powerful piece of the town. I dedicated another 20 percent to the town itself, different strategic points and events that happened during the time frame. And the other 10, 15 percent I dedicated to probably world events, just to let us know where we were at this point in time. Uh, it was a slow process getting going. And my sister Eileen uh, in CBS, uh, we spent a lot of time, but she's the one that took it over with her friend. So at this point in time, I am going to call on my sister Eileen if she could come forward. the centenary of the store. I knew it was important to him to adequately recognize the history of the store and the contribution of George and Patricia Winslow. When Roy first called, he said, Eileen, I was thinking, I was thinking of some special way that you can help me with the celebration. And my reply was, I can give you a quilt for a special draw. That's what you want. <laughs> But as the conversation went on, Roy had a totally different idea, and that was to make an historical quilt depicting 100 years of service as a drugstore in this town. It was very important to him that the Winslows be an integral part of this celebration. So Roy says, I'm sure you can come up with something. So after some brainstorming with him, we decided on a quilt with 100 blocks with an historical event in each one. The colors had to be in keeping with the heritage style of the store. Following that, it was the decision of how many photos versus script would be in the quilt. Several phone calls later, and a trip to Grand Falls, we finalized the layout of the quilt. Then it was left up to me to do the sewing, the quilting, and the embroidery. <coughs> Every now and then I would get a call. How's the quilt going, Eileen? It hadn't been started for the first few calls, and finally I had to get things in motion, which I did, and completed it in lots of time for today. 
At this point, I would like to call on Roy's two sons, Brandon and Adam, if they would unveil the first quilt, because there's another one you'll hear about later. So if the people in the front here, behind, in front of the black sheet, would just move away. The boys are going to remove some pins. And this quilt will be hung inside the drugstore at some point at the front entrance so people will be able to see it because it is quite a piece of history. There's a lot of history there that I never knew about of Grand Falls. World history, as Roy said, and family history of the people that own the store. The pictures on the quilt were photographs that Roy had gathered. And many, many thanks to Stag Signs, David Hiscock, and Trevor Brett, who scanned these pictures onto fabric so that I could put them into this quilt. So on the top, as most of you can see at this point as it's being unveiled, you can see the 100 years very boldly. And then in white lettering going around the side, you have, and I forget, Roy, a quality of service. Is that right? A heritage of service, Grand Falls Drugstore. One of the dates that stands out in my mind as I was making it for him was 1995 which was the year of the armed robbery at the store, and I happened to be working that Saturday afternoon at 5.30 when this person came into the store, walked around for about two or three minutes, I was all alone, and he saunters up to the counter, leans in over with a Sobeys bag in his hand, and pulls out a knife, and he says, give me your money. <laughs> he asked me three times before I passed it over. <laughs> Anyway, here is the quilt that we started with, the one that Roy had this vision of. And if I do say so myself, I think it turned out to be quite a piece of work. The embroidery that you see going around the whole perimeter of the quilt was done by my boss, Kathy Pittman, who owns Peacemaker's Quilt Shop in Long Pond. And the rest of it was done by myself. And there is a label along the back, one of the corners. Adam, I'm not sure if it's the corner near you. Can you just turn that over a wee bit? Is it possible? Yeah, there is an embroidery label there recognizing the three groups of people that helped to make it. Because without David and his team at Stag Signs, we could not have had those pictures done. They were extra patient with me when I was in there, and I know how many times and how many trips that Roy made to uh, get things moving. But the story doesn't end there. Roy decided he wanted to suspend this quilt at the entrance to the store, and he didn't like the idea of the back of the quilt being there, so he wanted pictures on the back. <laughs> Roy was the youngest of 10 children and used to getting his own way. So after discussions about this regarding the quilt making process, he had some large photos scanned, which depict different historical points, and he passed them to me saying, I'm sure you can come up with something. So his confidence in me was more than I had at that moment. But after some careful consideration and the addition of some quilting features, I did complete a pattern for the second quilt, which will now hang behind the first one so that you will not see just plain fabric. So uh, Adam and Brandon, if you can move on down the path there. <laughs> I know at this moment the quilt is not hanging as flat as it should, but that's due to the way we had to put it up at, on the outside for today. <laughs> so the first picture that you see being at, uh, on veil there is an old drugstore counter. And Roy had some large picture scan that show the making of the powder in the pharmacies at those times. I know he's got a very nice picture there of uh, presenting the Wish Foundation with uh, a gift some years ago. He's got a picture of the store as it is today. He has, he has also done the clerks who served in the store over the past 100 years. If someone's forgotten, sincere apologies. He has a picture of his children there kind of in the center, Callista, Sarah, Brandon, Adam and the dog, cat, Alex, center front. He has the uh, honor roll of the current staff and the past pharmacist there, pharmacist. And at the very end is a druggist just mixing up some concoction. 
At the top, as you can see, it starts out with the McCarthy's who started this business in 1913. The Winslows are in the center and it's being carried on right now by the Greens, Roy and his staff. Also, uh, going through... <laughs> trying to put this one together was a little more of a challenge, but uh, with a little bit of help from my boss. So as you can see, some triangles there going up through the centers of the pictures. In quilting, these are called flying geese. And I chose to use those because in my mind, they are pointing to the future of Grand Falls Drugstore. So Roy, where are you? Roy, on behalf of your brothers, sisters, and their families, I congratulate you on your service and dedication to your customers in carrying on the Winslow tradition and wish you all the best in the future. And at this time, I would like to ask our oldest brother, Don Green, to come forward to make a small presentation. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and here's my brother, Don. realizing that I didn't realize there was so much history embedded in the Grand Falls uh, drugstore. I knew a little bit, but it was only, only just a superficial type of thing. But yeah, it's a, it, it has a wonderful history. I was, uh, I was thinking this afternoon, you seem to emphasize uh, service, you know, which is a wonderful thing. We're, we're living in, in, in a society today where you, you phone somebody, you don't talk to a person, you talk to a machine. You know, the robotic society. I was thinking how, how, how important it is for service. People buy somebody to talk to once in a while. And you know, in order to give service, I was thinking you have to have a compassion for people. Because it doesn't come automatically. You, you don't legislate service. You have to have a compassion. So I, I thought that was you know, a wonderful thing. So Roy, uh, Ina told me, believe it or not, she said, take this thing in the bag. <laughs> so there it is. Anyway, congratulations on your your 100th anniversary of Grandfather Drugstore. From your brothers and sisters, May 2013. I want to say, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. So I want to say, we're on very proud of you. wants to step up and a little bit of entertainment. I'll give you a little bit more on that. Uh, I went to St. John's Thursday morning and I was sort of in a tear to get on the road and everything. And this guy called me and uh, he said, uh, where are you to? And I said, well, I'm pretty well getting ready to go on the road. He said, can I see you for five minutes? And I said, yeah. And so he said, I'll meet you at the drugstore. So he came down and uh, he gave me a CD. And with the CD, the, uh, I played it in the Subaru that morning. <laughs> and uh, anyway, when it was finished playing, I 
looked at Ivan and I said, well, you got a, you got another can of worms open. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, I'm going to want you to play it here today. And he said, no, well, you can play the CD outside. And I said, no, no, no. I said, I, I'd like for you to come and do it live. So without going any further, uh, I'm going to ask Ivan Nolensworthy to come up and uh, take it from here. step up in this place. Roy is good for a joke and that's all this means is just a joke for Roy and the staff but to get her a few words here so I hope you enjoy it. I wasn't around when the drugstore started but uh, the things I've heard and uh, people have said around me I've put a few things together. Come up with a fair story I thought. I hope you heard the story of the drugstore down the road. It reminds me of a story of a little train that could. It started way back, 1913, I guess, on the way up the ladder to the top rung of success. Well, there must have been some slow times on the way up through the years. Its owners must have worked so hard through all their sweat and tears. Oh, they brought up their families in a town trying to survive. Hoping things would turn out good, trying to keep their dreams alive. I'm talking about a drugstore in the paper town, Grand Falls. Grand Falls drugs, the girl all say, is the answer to phone calls. It fought itself through two world wars, times when things weren't good. The people are kept their going, worked in the mill and the lumber woods. Well, I guess the big bouquet goes out to the owners years ago. Then the Cardies and the Winslows kept it all in a real smooth flow. But then it all broke loose, my friends, the good times all began. When a little guy came on the scene from Winterton, New <laughs> Now the 80s never seemed to lie, the people faced the flood. Sure changes came, new people came to cheer on this new blood. Well, he made the people welcome, as the slogan said more. Some of the nicest people, our customers use this door. So now they're celebrating a milestone in their time. As the things are said and done, I hope this stays in rhyme. Let's celebrate 100 years, the drugstore have been here. So let's all gather round, my friends, have a glass of cheer. So it's happy birthday now to the drugstore on High Street. May she see all good times and never see defeat. So many places come and go, but let's keep this in mind. Let's all help her move along until the end of time. Congratulations to Roy Green, the staff here at the store. Bring her through her hundredth year, may you see many more. Let's celebrate and have some fun like the bills of success rank. Hope for the best and lots of luck to Roy Green and the gang. Yes, congratulations to Roy Green and the staff here at the store. Bring her through her unearth year, may you see many more. Let's celebrate and have some fun like the bills of success rank. Hope for the best. Lots of luck to Roy Green and the gang. Hope for the best, 
Wish him luck to Roy Green and his gang. Thank you. 